Hello everyone, my name is Violet and I am 21 years old. I want to tell you how once I took revenge on a guy whom I used to love. Last summer, my aunt asked me to replace her at her work as a housekeeper at one of the richest and fanciest houses in our town. Unfortunately, no matter how hard I tried, I sometimes screwed up. Like for example, when once during another reception, I messed up with the number of settings on the dining table. Miss Kendra, the lady of the house, began to yell at me for my incompetence right in front of everybody else. It was so embarrassing. Suddenly, one of her guests stood up for me. He not only turned everything into a joke, but he also said that I wasn't mistaken at all because he wasn't going to stay for dinner. So the table was set for the right number of people. And then he winked at me. Gosh, I was so grateful to him. Later on, I found out that his name was Mark and that he was Miss Kendra's cousin or nephew or something. After that happened, he began to visit his aunt almost every day. The old lady was obviously flattered by his attention, while I couldn't help but notice the glances he was throwing at me, which made me feel a bit awkward. Once I, as usual, went to the store to buy groceries and returned home with lots of packages. And just as soon as I began to unload the trunk of the car entrusted to me, Mark appeared as if from out of nowhere. He did it so unexpectedly that I even cried out in surprise, which made him laugh. He helped me carry my packages through the back door and asked me to make him coffee. It was strange that he didn't go into the living room, but made himself comfortable in the kitchen, which made me feel uncomfortable. We had a nice little chat, and just as soon as I came up to him to give him the mug, he took my hand. Everything that happened next completely blew my mind. He stood up and hugged me around my waist and kissed me so passionately. God, nobody had ever kissed me like that before. He pressed me with my back to the table where we had put those packages with the groceries and a few cans and fruit fell down on the floor. That same second, I heard Miss Kendra approaching the kitchen and calling out my name. Of course, I immediately bounced back from Mark and pretended as if nothing out of the ordinary happened. As soon as she entered the kitchen and saw her beloved relative, Miss Kendra asked me to serve them coffee on the terrace and they both left. But just before Mark got out of my sight, he smiled at me again. And that's when my knees even gave away. Well, as you have probably already guessed, since then I have been anxiously waiting for each and every time he shows up in our house. And each time he seizes the moment to be alone with me, at least for a few minutes, to give me a kiss. And very soon those passionate kisses went, so to speak, to a horizontal scale. The first time, it happened when after a long day, I took a shower, walked back into my room, and discovered him sitting on my bed. Of course, I got surprised, especially taking into account that I saw him leaving the house earlier that day. But then I realized that since my room was on the first floor, he simply snuck in through the open window. He said that he had been wanting to do this right from the first moment he saw me. Even though I knew how wrong it was, I must admit that I also wanted the same thing. Since then, he came to my room every night and stayed with me until the early morning. Once he brought me the most beautiful bouquet of flowers I'd ever had. He came, as usual, to visit Miss Kendra, but first he handed me that bouquet. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to take it to my room, and just when I was about to put it into a vase, she came in and saw the flowers. She decided that they were for her, and I couldn't argue so I had to put them in the living room. Thank God I had enough time to take the note and hide it in my pocket. It was really intimate. Once, our relationship almost got revealed. Miss Kendra got up earlier than usual and decided to wake me up too. I panicked and began to stuff all of Mark's clothes under the bed. With a glance and a couple of gestures, he let me know that I had done a stupid thing cause now he couldn't get out of my room through the window. Miss Kendra kept persisting knocking on my door, so he didn't have any other option but to hide in my closet. Luckily, his aunt didn't walk into my room, but she probably guessed that I had a man in there, cause later that day she explicitly stressed that I wasn't allowed to have any guests after midnight or behind closed doors. He also wanted to strengthen our connection by giving me different small but really expensive gifts. 
Miss Kendra once noticed that I was wearing diamond earrings, which Mark gave me. And even though I lied to her and said that I got them for my mom a long time ago, she turned out to not believe me. And when one day I went out for groceries, that nosy old woman searched my bedroom and found some more expensive jewelry. She decided that I had stolen all of them from her myriad treasuries, so she took them all from me and shamefully forced me out of the house. I was devastated and completely humiliated. But in addition, I had let my aunt down, cause I was ready to bet that after that happened, she also wouldn't get her job back again. I had nothing else to do, so I called Mark to tell him about what had happened. He immediately rented me a room at one of the expensive hotels. Oh, and you should have seen how terrible he felt because of everything that happened. He said that if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have to go through so much trouble. He promised to talk to his parents to get me the same well-paying job at their house as soon as the noise around that scandal settled down, and I believed him. He sometimes stayed overnight with me at that hotel, and he kept saying how badly he wanted to stay with me there forever. And then once, he didn't come for three days in a row. I was worried and I kept calling him, but he didn't pick up his phone. And then the concierge told me that the payment for my room was over, and I had to either pay more to live there further, or I had to leave. I was in shock. Mark still didn't pick up the phone, so I had to pack my stuff and move out. I was desperate and I decided to go to Mark's house. I mean, he promised to get me a job there after all. The maid opened the door and when I asked her to get me Mark, she happily smiled and said that he was with his guests celebrating his engagement. I couldn't believe my ears and apparently I turned pale cause she got worried about my health. I kindly insisted on having her call him. I was waiting for him on the front porch. My mind was racing about what I should say to him and whether I had any right to cause a scandal. How could he do this to me after having ruined my life? He definitely didn't expect to see me. Just as soon as he got outside, he pulled me to hide behind the bushes. He started apologizing once again and said that it was an arranged marriage, something that was necessary for the family business and that it was me who he truly loved. There were many other pleasant words, which back then seemed completely unnecessary. Then he kissed me on my forehead, told me to wait for a second, and then went back into the house. A few minutes later, the same maid opened the door once again and handed me an envelope with a few thousand dollars. I felt as if I had just been dragged through the mud. I was about to leave, but then suddenly I felt so furious. I rushed into the house, completely ignoring that the maid was shouting at me. I went to the backyard where I saw all the guests, including my former employer, Miss Kendra, by the way. I threw that envelope with the money that I gotten straight onto the table, shouting at Mark that it wasn't enough for my humiliation. It accidentally landed right on his bride's plate with hot soup, and a thick wave of it spilled out and splattered all over her outfit. Of course, I didn't mean for that to happen. Then the turmoil began. Everyone jumped up from their seats. Someone rushed to the poor girl. Another person began to demand that someone call security to kick me out. And it was only old Miss Kendra who was calmly sitting and looking straight at me. As if from nowhere, security appeared and already started to drag me away when she calmly raised her hand and unexpectedly loudly told everybody to calm down. Strange, but everyone obeyed. That's when I realized that apparently in the world of those rich people, she was not only the oldest representative of the family, but also the most powerful one. She looked at me again with her piercing gaze and then rather kindly asked me to explain what all this meant. I swallowed nervously. To be honest, at that moment, my courage and decisiveness had completely left me, but I had nothing else to do but to start talking. When I was done, Miss Kendra stood up and slowly walked over to that envelope, which still was laying peacefully on the soup plate. She opened it, saw the money, and then suddenly she turned very sharply and gave Mark a really ringing slap. Out of the corner of my eye, I even noticed that the face of the security guard who was still holding my elbow grimaced in pain. And then Miss Kendra told me to wait for her in the living room. Of course, she didn't apologize to me or anything. People like her never do that to people like me. But she appreciated the fact that I didn't take that money, which apparently made me a decent person. 
She promised to find me another job at one of her friend's houses, which will be well paid and less provocative, as she put it. She also agreed to keep my aunt's job, which is probably the thing I feel most relieved about in all this. Luckily, I never saw Mark after that again. But as far as I heard, a few weeks later, his wedding was canceled, which caused a lot of problems.